Hi everybody, welcome back. We're on Lesson 9. Lesson 9 is the book about the new sweater. The new sweater. What is a sweater? Of course, you probably wear a sweater in the winter time. It's very cold, right? You pull on a sweater. Usually sweaters are pullover or sometimes sweaters are zip or button, right? Different types of sweaters. But they're an extra layer of clothing. They keep you warm. So we're going to take a look at a sweater here. Take a look at this boy. Do you know what his name is? Say, well, how do I know his name? Well, look at this package here. The package is for him. We can think inside this package is a new sweater for him. What's his name? His name is Pete Bird, right? And this is where he lives. He lives in Washington, USA. W-A is the short a way to write Washington State. And that's in the United States in the Northwest. Washington State, USA. So he lives in America. His name is Pete and he got a new sweater. Okay. This is his new sweater. Look at that. It's very nice, isn't it? It's blue. It's fluffy. Right? It's, if you touch it, ah, oh, it's very soft and very warm. And it maybe has many little hairs sticking out. What's on his sweater? What are these white things? These white things are sheep. Sheep. They're animals. If you think about sheep's hair, sheep's hair is very fluffy. And we use sheep's hair to make sweaters. So we're going to learn about that in this story. Let's begin. Here's Pete again. Here's Pete and here's his mother. And there's the package. Why did Pete get a package? Let's read. It was Pete's birthday. Aha! It's his birthday. So he gets a package. He gets a package. Somebody sends him a sanmul. Sanmul? Sanmul? I said that the other day and the other Korean person didn't understand me. Maybe my pronunciation is not good. Sanmul is a present or a gift. And if somebody sends you a present or a gift in the mail, it comes as a package. Aunt Robbie had sent him a package. It came all the way. When you say this part, you have to say all the way. <laughs> from New Zealand because all the way means very, very far away. New Zealand, wow, he lives in Washington State in America. His Aunt Robbie lives in New Zealand. That's like on the map. Washington State is here. New Zealand is way down here on the globe next to Australia. That's really far. The Pacific Ocean is between them. It's far away. So all the way from New Zealand, very far away. Inside the package. Well, what's inside the package? What is inside this package here? Inside the package were two gifts. Wow. Usually for your birthday, one person gives you one gift. But Aunt Robbie is a special aunt. She gave Pete two gifts. Nice aunt. So there are two gifts. Also, what else? There were some photos. Some photos. Okay? Not one, not two, but more than. More than two. We don't know how many exactly. We say some. Some photos. Anything else? Yes. One more thing. There was a a means one, so only one. A birthday card, too. So he got a birthday card, too. And here is the birthday card. Here's the outside of the card, and here's the inside of the card. Aunt Robbie wrote a message, a personal message to Pete, and she wrote it inside the card. That's nice. When you send somebody a birthday present, it's a good idea to send them a card too. Write something like, how do you feel? Or congratulations. Some personal message to the other person. 
This message is, Happy birthday, Pete. I hope you like your woolly friend. Woolly friend, we'll have to look later about that. Your sweater is made from sheep's wool. Love, Aunt Robbie. So Aunt Robbie is talking about the presents. Remember, there are two gifts. Two gifts. One is a woolly friend. That's one gift. And two is your sweater. So I'm curious. I want to know, what does she mean by woolly friend? What does that mean? Let's take a look. Let's continue reading. Okay. Pete opened the first gift. It was a woolly sheep. Aha! There it is there. That's the woolly friend. I hope you like your woolly friend. That's the friend. Of course, it's not a real sheep. You don't put an animal in the package and send it all the way from New Zealand, right? Um, it's a doll. It's just a stuffed animal, right? So, Pete picked up the sheep. He picked it up. Ba ba. What sound does a sheep make? A sheep makes the sound ba ba. Can you say that? Ba ba. That's a sheep. Okay? Okay. So, ba ba. The sheep talked, right? They made some noise. Pete laughed. Look, Pete is happy. It's funny. Chemisayo, that's really cool. He picks up the sheep and it goes ba ba. Right? We can see the sheep here and it's saying ba ba. Okay, I'll stop now. Okay. Okay, so that's Pete's present. That's gift number one. That's the first gift. That's the woolly friend. It is a woolly sheep. By the way, woolly, right? Wool. Let's talk about wool later on in this book, because that's important. Wooly. We'll see what that is. The next one, of course, is then Pete opened the other gift, the second gift. It was a sweater. Here's the sweater. Wow, that's cool. Wait a minute. Does he look happy? I hope he's look happy. He's trying to figure out, what is it? Uh, but it's a sweater. His mom's happy. Yeah, good. Pete's going to be warm. But this is the sweater. This is the new sweater that we saw before. So this is Pete's second gift. Okay, well, let's take a, uh, uh, let's stop there. In the next part, we'll talk about the, the sweater and especially about wool or woolly. So don't miss that. We'll see you then. Take care. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Remember, we're talking about Pete and it's his birthday, his aunt sent him two gifts. That's right, two gifts for his birthday from one aunt. That's great. The second gift was the new sweater. Remember Pete's expression? He was driving, what is this? But now, look at his expression. Now he's like, whoa, this is cool, right? This is neat, this is great. Yeah, he looks really happy, right? Pete picked up the sweater. It was soft, right? He can feel it. Look at his face. He's like, whoa, it's cool. It's soft. There were sheep on it. This is cool, he said. Oh, yeah, this is cool. It's really neat. He really likes the sweater, okay? Now, remember, there are two gifts, the birthday card. What else was in the present? photos. Okay, so Aunt Robbie is really nice aunt, right? She sends him two gifts, she sends him a birthday card, and she sends him some photos. What are the photos about? Let's read. Let's look at the photos, said mom. Aunt Robbie has written a story to go with them. Wow, this aunt is really cool, right? So, Aunt Robbie sent these photos. Look at these photos. What are these photos of? These are photos of sheep in New Zealand, right? You can see, wow, look at all the sheep in New Zealand. Of course, New Zealand is a very beautiful country. Many movies were made here. And uh, this is New Zealand. This, and New Zealand has many sheep, right? By the way, don't say sheeps. No, sheep, sheep. Don't put S, 
right? Sheep is singular and sheep is plural. Look at the sheep. That's singular. There are many sheep in the field. So we don't put S. I know English is crazy. Sometimes you put S. Most of the time you put S, but some words you don't. Sorry. Okay. So let's read the story that goes with the pictures. This is the beginning of Aunt Robbie's story. So she's writing these notes on her pictures. Okay, this is the first picture we see. I am working on a sheep farm. There are millions of sheep in New Zealand. So Aunt Robbie is I. When, when we see I, we know that's Aunt Robbie. Aunt Robbie is working on a sheep farm. This is probably her farm. There are millions of sheep. That's a lot of sheep. Millions. How many zeros in a million? We have one, right? And then we put one, two. Is that, a, is that all? No, that's just 100. We put another one. Is that it? No, that's a thousand. Let's put zero. Is that it? No, that's 10,000. There? No, that's 100,000. <gasps> there. Look at all those zeros. That's one million. One million. The comma, comma. That helps you. One, two, three, comma. One, two, three, comma. One. That's one million. But there are millions. More than one million. Maybe two million. Maybe three million. There are millions of sheep in New Zealand. Whew. That's a lot of sheep. Okay. In spring, the lambs are born. These are lambs. Lambs are baby sheep. In English, I'm sorry again, but you know, we don't, we have different names for the ba different animal babies, right? For example, dogs. If a dog has a baby, do you say it's a baby dog? Yeah, you can say that, but most people say it's a puppy, right? If a cat has babies, what do you say? It's a baby cat? Yeah, but most people say it's a kitty. It's a kitty. Puppy, kitty. For sheep, we have lambs. Now, all sorts of animals have different names for their babies, but that's a long lesson. We don't have time for that. But in this case, baby sheep are called lambs. Lambs. And we use S in that case. Lambs. They look so cute. No, no more kiepchi, all right? No more kiepta. They are very cute. They like to play. They like to play. Of course, these lambs like to jump around. They have a lot of energy, right? Uh, most babies and children have lots of energy. They, they, they run around. So these are the lambs. And here's our friend again, our woolly friend of the doll. Okay? Now, in winter... When it's cold, right? The sheep have thick wool. It keeps them warm. A lot of animals will grow extra hair when it gets cold in winter because the animals, normally, they have some sense. They grow more hair. We don't grow more hair, right? That would be strange, wouldn't it? If we grew hair in the wintertime, we just have the hair up here, right? And that just grows all the time. doesn't matter if it's winter or summer. It always grows. But uh, the sheep have thick wool. It keeps them warm. Okay, so look at these sheep, right? They look very tough. They look very big, right? They look kind of fat, actually. <laughs> but that's because they have a lot of wool on them. That hair is called wool. Now, remember we talked about woolly friend and the sweater uh, is wool? Well, next in the next part of the lesson, we'll take a look at how we get the wool from the sheep to make sweaters. So that'll be interesting. I'll see you then. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We're talking about the story of Pete's new sweater. Now, remember, Pete's aunt, Aunt Robbie, sent Pete a package. In the package were two presents, a birthday card, and some photos. And we're looking at the photos from Aunt Robbie, and she wrote a story on the bottom. Now, so far, we saw that the sheep 
at the farm where Aunt Robbie works have thick wool on their bodies in the winter. What happens next? Well, let's read. The dogs help round up the sheep. Our dogs help round up the sheep. Round up, round up, is what we say when farmers or ranchers gather their animals together. So if it's a cattle, like cows, if it's a cattle rancher, they will round up the cows. If it's a horse farm, they will round up the horses. In this case. They're rounding up the sheep, and these dogs are very smart. These dogs are very good dogs. They're very smart, and they know how to guide the sheep. Right? The dogs guide them, them, the sheep, to the wool shed to be shorn. Now, take a look at this word here, shed. It's it's two words put together. Shed is a small building outside a larger building. Where people keep things, it's where you、uh, have like extra room. In this case, they're keeping wool in these buildings. And look at the sheep. The sheep is okay, but look, it's getting a haircut, right? It's like a miyung shell for sheep. Sorry, it's like、uh, getting a haircut. The sheep's okay, right? But the that the farmer, the rancher, is using a tool to cut the wool off the sheep. It doesn't hurt the sheep, just like if you got a haircut, it doesn't hurt you. It's the same thing. So the sheep's kind of like,、uh, kind of like, looks like he likes it. Yeah,、uh, it kind of feels good, right? But he's taking all the wool off. Afterwards, the sheep kind of look funny, right? But this is to be shorn. When I say it's like a haircut, we use this word for this exact thing. Shorn. When you cut all the hair off of an animal, you、uh, shear it. In in this is past tense. To be shorn. To be shorn means to have all of their hair removed. Okay. After all the hair is moved, these sheep have been shorn. So that's a chokum himdro word. Okay. It's a little difficult word. Okay. The sheep look funny. <laughs> Right, they look kind of funny without their wool. Remember, before they looked big and fat and tough. Now they look cold and funny. But don't worry, 걱정하지마세요 It soon grows back again. It will soon grow back again. So the sheep will get their wool back soon enough. Okay. But what does the farmer do with the wool after the sheep are shorn? He's got a lot of wool in his shed. The wool is packed into bales. Bale is another specific word. It's a little hard word. It's not a common word, but it's used for this situation. They take the wool and they put it in big bales. Now, bales is used for、uh, wool from a sheep. Bale is also commonly used for hay. Hay. Hay is a type of plant grown on farms that animals eat. Horses eat hay, cows eat hay, sheep eat hay. But when you get the hay together, it's like a plant, kind of like wheat. But the farmers will get it together and they'll bundle it together. That's called a bale of hay. So bale is a word used for grouping things together, especially for things that you get from a farm, like wool or hay. Okay. It goes to a woolen mill. Now, a mill is like a factory. It's、uh, a big building, lots of machines inside the mill, and those machines do something, right? Those machines, you can see, this is the the woolen mill here, and these machines take the sheep's hair, and it makes what? Some of the wool is made into yarn. Yarn. Here's another. Word that's a little maybe a little difficult, but it's yarn. Yarn is a special type of、um, material that is used to make clothing. Now my shirt is not made from yarn because the 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 fiber, the strings are are small. Yarn is thick. Yarn is thick. If you have a sweater, take a look at your sweater. The 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 fiber or the little strings they're thick. 
That's yarn, and we can see the yarn here. Just one, one string of yarn, we can see it, right? That's thick, it's yarn. So, some of the yarn is knitted into sweaters like yours. If you have a sweater, right, that's what I'm saying. Take a look at your sweater. Oh, these are beautiful sweaters, aren't they? They're very nice, probably very expensive too. Uh, wool is a very good material. And these types of sweaters, which are very beautiful patterns, they're a little expensive, but they're very warm and they're very soft. They're nice. Uh, so if you have a sweater like this, some of the yarn in the mills is made into sweaters like yours. Okay, let's review. Well, let's, let's end up here. Pete put on his new sweater. He put on his new sweater. Now he knows where his sweater came from. He says, I like the story of my sweater, he said. Now, this is a great story, right? His aunt, oh, really good aunt, his aunt sent him two gifts. His aunt sent him a toy sheep, and she sent him the sweater here. This is the sweater. And she also sent him a birthday card, of course. Hope you like these two things. And she sent him some photos that told him the story of how his sweater was made. It starts with sheep, right? Sheep are on a farm. Uh, baby sheep grow up. Baby sheep are lambs. Lambs, they play around. In the wintertime, their hair gets very thick. We call that wool. Dogs help the ranchers put the uh, sheep into a wool shed. The sheep are shorn. The wool is packed into bales. Those bales are sent to a mill. The, in the mill, they make yarn, and the yarn is used to make your sweater or anybody's sweater. Whew. It's a long story, but we can see the story starts with the sheep and ends with the sweater. And that's where sweaters come from. So, if you do have a sweater, or if you're thinking about that, that's how sweaters are made. So, if it's cold outside, well, I don't know if you're watching this in the summer or the winter, but if it's cold outside, if it is the winter, put on a sweater. And now you know where sweaters come from. Okay, that was an interesting story. Hope you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.